It's dwarfed. It's dwarfed by the tiniest little dude in the game. You've been dethroned, sir. <laughs>and welcome back to Rogue Leader Gaming and welcome back to another tutorial uh, slash update video for Derail Valley. I know literally a few days ago as uh, as I actually I'm recording this on the day the finale goes out that I said, oh, I need a break from Derail Valley and we're going to probably not see it for a little while, just a little bit so that I can have a break from the game and I still do need a break, <laughs> but I recorded that a month ago and now we have an update immediately after posting the finale. Like literally this, this came out like right before the finale. I still have some plans for doing some Derail Valley videos at some point, but um, and I do still plan to do exactly what I'm doing right now, covering update videos and uh, as well as tutorials for any new locomotives or any new uh, major features that they add. Uh, anyway, before we get started, I do want to remind everybody, like, subscribe, all the great stuff over on the channel. Uh, we do of course have a completed full series uh, um, which I will link, uh, somewhere, uh, in the, probably in the corner, in the top corner, uh, as well as, uh, of Derail Valley, as well as I have started a series on the game Railroader, uh, which is, uh, relatively new and also quite a lot of fun. It's not quite as exciting as Derail Valley, but it is also, um, I'm having a whole lot of fun with it. I just, I'm struggling to be able to put it down. I will admit right now that those that series isn't doing as well as Derail Valley. It isn't as doing as well as I would like it to. So if you are watching this, uh, be sure to go check that series out as well. Railroader. It's a whole lot of a fun game, um, but they have added some cool stuff. So let's go over first things first. I want to go over ahead before we get into the tutorial part of this video, uh, because they did add a brand new locomotive. I want to go over some of the patch notes, kind of the things that I found the most important. I will, however, as this is going, uh, put up on screen a scrolling uh, look at the patch notes that you can look at uh, and you can always pause the video and read the full patch notes and everything um, as well as I will link the um, announcement and everything in the description hopefully I'll remember to do that I, I should remember to do that we'll see what happens um, but yes elephant in the room of course they have added the BE2-260 micro shunter which we'll be taking a look at later in the video timestamp will appear on screen uh, if you want to skip ahead to the tutorial section of the video talking about that particular new change as well as I will also have a little bit covering the also added a vehicle catalog which we'll again take a look at at some point after the change log has finished rolling across your screen at the moment uh, they have revamped the de power uh, powertrain simulation so diesel electrics have been reworked slightly both the de2 and the de6 the de6 has also been given uh brand new sounds uh the de2 has had its power boosted which is exciting it's a little bit a little bit of beefier um i believe it's back to the, its old um its old tonnage rating i think and then they've also and this is really exciting they've also added to the dm3 so for the DM3, they have added a gear shift pattern to the dash. Thank you, Lord, because, oh my gosh, that was, um, I, I had to keep pulling up a, 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 a dot JPEG in, on my second monitor in order to figure out how in the fuck to run the thing. They have begun to implement player owned vehicles. So now this is really important. So listen up. Work trains are now player owned. So uh, if I go, I am currently in um, my, actually this is the career mode that from the series. Uh, if I go ahead and go to work train here, that is the hand car, uh, the caboose, the slug, and the new uh, BE2 is also considered a work train. And they are all player owned. And that means that insurance does not cover these vehicles. They can be damaged and insurance does not cover uh, these these particular items, um, player owned vehicles. In addition, uh, player owned vehicles must be serviced manually at service stations such as su such at where. Where's the service station here? It's OK. No, it's over here. They must be serviced at service stations such as uh, this one. In addition, the BE2, the new look, the, the new uh, micro shunter, 
as well as, okay, that's really loud, as well as the slug can be damaged. However, the caboose and hand car cannot be damaged. Uh, this is due to the fact that the, because of how the caboose works in particular, as well as the hand car, it is easier if they're simply not damaged. Uh, but the BE2 and the slug can be damaged. Um, in addition, another thing that's been changed about player owned vehicles is you now get the hand car for free at the very start of the game. Uh, this is to hopefully um, reduce having to uh, use, oh, there we go, fast travel, such as like, like doing this and having to spend money, as well as it is hopefully meant to uh, reduce the amount of F spamming going on. Uh, they have adjusted the sleep mechanic, so now you can sleep for lo depending on your game settings. That it is, it is dependent on game settings. Uh, you can now sleep for a longer amount of time, and you have shorter cooldowns depending on your game settings. Um, sitting height adjustments. You can now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the locomotive here, but you can now adjust. Uh, this the sitting height. This is just a better way to show it off so you can hold X and use the mouse wheel and Adjust the height at which you're sitting so if you wanted to be short you can be short And if you wanted to be tall enough that you're literally standing you can also sit and be Oh boy, excuse me. You can also sit and be tall enough um that you're suddenly standing again. Other things that have happened, there have been improvements to UI. There have also been improvements to uh, the way things are handled in VR. I do not play VR. I know nothing about the VR version of the game. And therefore, unfortunately, if you want more information on that, I, I am going to have to ask you to read the patch notes because again, um, I, I know nothing about VR. You can read the patch notes and know what it means. There have also been various graphics fixes. Hopefully some of the graphical bugs that we have seen uh, have been adjusted and hopefully uh, fixed. As well as there have been improvements to the tutorials. Yay! Uh, except Alt Future, you're going to put me out of the job. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that is a bit of a thing. And then the, like I said, the final thing uh, from the patch notes that is important is fast travel now advances the game time, which we're going to go ahead and see momentarily as let's go ahead and start getting into the tutorial part of this. So the BE2. Oh! The last thing before uh, we get into the tutorial, one other thing, which I will consider part of the tutorial, um, is this. So if we look at my inventory here, we will see something brand new that wasn't there the last time uh, in, in Monday's episode, the finale. And that is this, the vehicle catalog, which is a new item you will always be able to get. If you drop it anywhere, you'll be able to get it back, I, I assume, from the... Um, Lost and found. I don't know why I couldn't think of that, but it's the vehicle catalog and you can see as I open this up, you can see it has stats for uh, it lists all the locomotives, all the vehicles uh, and all of the stats for them. And so you can see here, this is the DE2-480, uh, which again, they now have the dash. I'm not 100% sure what the dash refers to. You can see all of the different things. It's got load ratings. This is... Um, Oh, that's cool. I actually haven't looked at this yet. So it's got load ratings. So you can see here at 0% grade on a sunny day, it can haul um, 1,200 tons. Uh, on a, up a 2% grade on a sunny day, it can haul 300 tons. And up a 2% grade on, uh, on a rainy day uh, with wheel slip because of the rain, it can only haul 250 tons. That is brilliant to know. It has ease of operation score, the hauling score, shunting score, and maintenance score, and you can very easily be able to look. I love the fact that they can very easily say, oh, look, this is how many tons it can haul right up here in the corner, because then you can definitively see all the different things. Yeah, okay, so it, li it lists the license right up here um, as well. So you can see as again, you have these first three have just had the specific licenses and everything. But if we go to the DH four, it requires the long haul license number one and two, which I find, um, a little interesting. That's, that's, that's cool that it shows that. Yes, I'm right. So, okay. So these locked things talk about how it is, um, locked behind these particular paywalls. And so this five, 50,000 is referring to this license, but the 10,000 and 20,000, it also tells you how much you need for the other two licenses. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, that's really cool. 
I'm actually, that's really, this is really neat. I'm so glad they've included this. This is so useful. This is probably one of the most useful pieces of documentation that they've provided in the game. Uh, all right, so let's also go ahead, like I said, and we're gonna come over here. Uh, another thing that they've changed is actually you can no longer spawn in things um, from the spawn menu that you haven't earned in, at least in terms of the work vehicles, uh, in a um, sandbox mode that you haven't earned in a career mode, which is why we're on the career save. Um, because I can't actually spawn this thing in in a sandbox save anymore. Um, and so we're here. So like I said, we are here at the... Where is it? The food factory in town. Um, and the BE2 micro shunter. It's here at the shop. And so we're going to come on in. And we're going to grab old Bob's garage key. Something that I have already purchased from this location a long time ago, but now I have to repurchase it because it's new thing. Yay, grab the keys. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make use of fast travel. So you can see right now it is getting on into the evening. If we bring out our pocket watch here, you'll see that it is um, six, what is that? 6.45. Uh, and so let's go ahead and we're gonna fast travel to, so the location for our, um, for the BE2 Old Bob's Garage is in fact um, that little spur between Iron Mine West and Machine Factory in town right here. That's where we're looking to go. So let's go ahead and fast travel to Machine Factory town and go. And we will see the effects of fast travel having been changed as now it is uh, it's full on nighttime. And if we bring up our pocket watch here, you can now see it. We it was almost seven o'clock and now it is nine o'clock. Uh, and so that is, in fact, a thing that we can, in fact, see now. Uh, where's our map? Which way do we want to go? We want to go that way, except for the fact that uh, I'm going to sleep to just make it day just because it's going to be annoying to try to do do this in the middle of the night. So, well, that's not loud and obnoxious at all. All right, so it is now raining as you can see, which is providing nice atmosphere and and it's 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 always raining in this game. Holy fuck. Okay, so uh, Old Bob's garage as we can see we are of course up here It's hard dark and hard to see because there's no sunlight because it's raining uh, But it's right here like I said and then of course we will get out our that's not a key. That's not a key a key and unlock this bad boy and there she spawns And we get our first look at the BE-2-260. Uh, it's a tiny little, it's a tiny little fuck. It's a cute little dude. And I'm going to go spawn anywhere fucking else. Let's go back to the food factory. Okay, so now that we have unlocked it, we can come over here, go to work train. And we can now spawn it in. Uh, we'll spawn it in, in this direction. Sure, there we go. So we can now spawn it in and take a bit of a look at this. So the BE2-260 is basically a track mobile. I'll put up a picture of one of those if you've never seen one. I actually got to see one of those. I don't remember what I was doing, but I got to see one of those in person recently, which was actually really cool. I wasn't expecting to see one. I was like, oh, hey, that's cool. It's basically a track mobile, which basically means uh, it's, it's a tiny little dude, as you can see. It's, it's, it's absolutely tiny. So, but anyway, as you can see, this is a little bit of a thing. And when I say a little bit of a thing, I really do mean a little bit of a thing. Um, it is, it is, it finally introduces us to the brand new electric powertrain. So before we've had diesel electric locomotives, we've had diesel hydraulic locomotives, we've had diesel, um, mechanical locomotives, and of course steam. Um, but this finally introduces us to in electric electric locomotive. This is a battery electric locomotive in particular. Um, and so it runs off of battery power and has to be charged, which I will actually show you guys how to do that uh, by the end of this video. But um, the key, like I said, can be bought in Food Factory in Town, which is where we were back in again uh, for $30,000. Uh, I didn't, I don't know if I caught that, but you probably saw that whenever I bought it. But uh, $30,000 is what it takes to get this bad boy. And, um, it's got one headlight, tiny little headlight. And like I said, it's a tiny little dude. 
Um, it's got a headlight on the other end as well. And if you're wondering how to get in it, you can only get in it from one side. The door's on this side. Open it up. Hop on in. Man, it is so small. The rain is really loud. It is so loud. Oh my gosh. Okay, great. Anyway, so we have here the cab, um, which before we get into it, of course, we've got our door. We've got our brake wheel. Let's go ahead and get that turned off so that we can move. And you'll notice there's no windshield wipers, which I'm only just now noticing, which means that in order to run this thing in the rain, we'll have to open the window. Like that. <laughs> and just listen to the sounds of the rain, which is kind of aesthetic. That's kind of a vibe. Or just deal with the rain uh, droplets. Kind of interesting. I kind of really wanted to run this in not the rain so that we could see what it could really do. But I might I might actually have to go over to that sandbox world. Anyway, we're just going to close that because it is a, a good deal quieter. And you can see the, um, the other side... Uh, the other side has the same thing, and that's the windows, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and show you guys how to turn it on. So to get it turned on, we're going to turn on the electrics right here. And you can see it starts buzzing at you because the traction motors are offline. Let's go ahead and get those turned on. You can hear the brake pipe cycling as it charges the brake line. Anyway, but you'll see that it's perfectly quiet, and that, that is just the way that it is. Uh, so we will, of course, turn on our headlight here. Uh, our headlight has two positions, so we've got... On forward. On reverse. And on both directions. And that is it, because as previously stated, there's one light bulb on each side. Um, so that is a thing. Those are your that. You also have, of course, the cab light. Turning it once will turn on your gauge lights. Turning it the second time will turn on your actual cab light. And then, of course, you also have your sander. Which is simply an on-off knob. Uh, we, of course, have our reverser right here. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to show you guys... Kind of some basics here. Uh, we're going to go that way, actually. So let, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, you know what? It's raining and wet. I'm just going to throw both lights on just so I don't have to remember. And then we're going to go that way. And then so we're going to go ahead and slap this puppy in reverse. But this is our reverser here. You can, of course, got forward, neutral, reverse. And then you've got this right here is your train brake stand. This doesn't have an independent brake. Uh, if you want to have an independent brake, the best you've got... You got a handbrake. It's so small, it really doesn't need an independent brake. And then we're just gonna take our throttle. And you may hear the electric electricity's going. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take this up and we're gonna have to probably quiet things down so that I can I can't hear myself think. Where's the There we go. Alright, there we go. Um, but you can hear the, the light hum of the batteries, um, as they go along. Uh, you also, of course, have the horn. Which is annoying. Tiny little dude of a horn. And as you can see, we're just, we're putting around the, uh, the yard here. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing over. It is, so the thing you gotta understand about this thing, it is not fast, it is not powerful. Uh, as you can see, the speedometer only goes up, oh, I forgot to show you guys the, uh, uh, these things. So, you, as you can see, the speedometer only goes to, like, 30, and anything over 30 is overspeeding the little dude. Um, you have the ammeter, you have the uh, traction motor temp, brake pipe, and ram main reservoir, of course. Uh, but that's basically the concept here. Alright, so we're coming up on our stop here, and we'll go head back the other direction so that we can go in... ...to the yard, and I'm literally going to stop this with the handbrake. 
That is all you need to do. Uh, alternatively, I suppose you could use the train brake, but I'm just going to use the handbrake. Throw it into forward. Wheel slip, of course. Open the other dute, the other dute window. It's like a little shitty car horn. It's like a car horn on like a Mazda Miata or something. I don't know, I'm not that familiar with those. All right, we're going to solid 30. Look at this, we're flying along at 30 mile, uh, kilometers an hour. Flying into the, into the, um, deal over here. I am going to use the train brake this time just to demonstrate that. Crikey, 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 stop, slow down, stop, slow down, stop, slow down. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we almost screwed the pooch. It's fine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop right here. I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna show you guys uh, If you're wondering where things are gonna get plugged in they're gonna get plugged in right there in this little charging port uh, And you're gonna come up to this big f this big fuck here this new thing uh, Which says danger high voltage High voltage rock and roll right here my dudes, so we're gonna Presumably have to grab this and plug it in am I right? Yes. So you just grab over and you walk up close to it and it, it's going to auto put it in uh, from your hand. And you, you'll see this meter here, electric charge. Uh, and then you can just... How, how does this work? Well, anyway, you, you get the point. The thing hasn't spent any of its battery because I've... I've barely used it, but you get the point. So you, you'll come here, you'll you'll do the lever, you'll pay for your gas like a good, you know, good individual, then it's going to fill it up, presumably, with uh, electric gas, because, you know, that's how that works. And then, of course, once you're done, um, I'm going to I'm gonna go operate on an assumption here. Yeah, that it'll just unplug on its own if you just leave it. That's funny. I've also left the brakes on like an absolute Muppet. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and spawn this thing in uh, right over here next to these two. So you can really see how how big this thing is. Um, <laughs> it's dwarfed. It's dwarfed by the tiniest little dude in the game. You've been dethroned, sir. <laughs> Look at that. It's so small. It's a small boy. Look at that. It's so small. Even compared to... Look how, look how much bigger... The DE2 is compared to that thing and look how much bigger the DE6 is compared to the DE2 Like it, it's a it's a ridiculous size difference like Oh my gosh, it's it's adorable. It's so cute. I am really excited um, for them adding the electric locomotives to the game um, because it gets us a step closer to the uh, an incredible update, the next incredible update, the next biggest thing since the simulator update, which is going to be where they're going to be adding um, electrification to some of the tracks. I think it's just going to be to some of them, though I'm not sure. Uh, they're also going to be reworking a lot of the actual track work throughout the game. Um, uh, throughout the map as well at some point uh, in doing this electrification as well and so we're actually going to get to see I don't know if it's going to be over I'm kind of hopeful it's overhead um, I'm hopeful it's overhead and not third rail because I think overhead would be more interesting uh, just give you some more stuff to look at I think overhead would be cooler but anyway um, I'm really excited for where this game is going like I said as much as I do genuinely need a break from this game I need to go do other things but I, I genuinely do love this game uh, it seriously is like one of my favorite train games ever because I mean look I mean this is some really cool stuff that they're adding um, and I'm really excited for the future of the game 
Um, and of course, like I said, I'll be here. Uh, you guys can check out every update here on this channel from this point moving forward. I know I didn't do such a good job since Simulator came out uh, doing this, um, but I kind of figured most of the features of Simulator were covered whenever I actually did the whole series on Simulator. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this tutorial. I hope you found it interesting. Like I said, it's an electric locomotive. Electric mo locomotives are simple controls wise. They're, they're usually really easy. Uh, to deal with this thing, um, the things I haven't talked about this thing yet, uh, this thing is very, um, lightweight, it's, as, as you can see, look at the size difference between it and the DE2, it is minuscule, and so, don't expect to be doing haul jobs with this thing, shunting jobs are questionable depending on the shunting job, maybe some of the really early shunting jobs you could do with this thing, but I'm really excited to get to see this thing in the game, it is really, really cool. I'm sorry, I just have to get some pictures here of this thing being cute and tiny next to the tiniest engine in the game. It is no longer. <laughs> it's a small boy and a tiny boy is what it is. Anyway, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed um, this little tutorial slash update video here. Hope you guys found it informative and all the things. Um, it's been a minute since I've done one of these, so I do apologize if it's not the greatest, but, you know. Um... Like I said, I will be covering things in the future. Uh, we will, of course, be doing other things on the channel, so be sure to subscribe and check out the channel, all the great stuff, and of course, we will see you in the next one. Later, everybody.